Well, the first platform's in. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Well, this video is all about the platforms. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how I made the old platforms, and then I'm going to go on to how I'm going to make the new ones. Now, just before I go any further, you'll notice that it's a complete card construction. And I've got, obviously, two pieces of card going down both sides, and there's like a zigzag effect going down through the middle. If you've ever made a Metcalf kit, it's very, very similar to that. Now, you'll also notice we've got these vertical pieces running along the edge of the platform. They were done with one millimetre by one millimetre square rod, and then just cut them to size and glue them on 15 millimetres apart. However, on the new version of this, what I'd like to do is to make something completely different. So you might know that Pico sell platform edging. Well, Piccadilly Station, as you'll see from the picture just appearing, is a bit different to that. We do have these vertical pieces, but at the top, there seems to be a bit of a fold over. So I'm going to 3D print that and then make my own platform edges and then hopefully stick those to the vertical card pieces and take it from there. Well, that certainly looks a bit different, doesn't it? Just in case you're all a bit worried that I've dismantled it and never to put it back all safely under there. There's some bits there as well, which is the waiting room that I made a long time ago. They're all there. Okay. Well, even more dramatic now. <laughs> as you can see, more of, the pla more of the stations disappeared. Now, what I've also gone ahead and done is I've cut back the cork. If you notice there, it was quite roughly laid. Um, that I'm not worried about because that will eventually get covered by ballast. But this could interfere with the platform. So I've cut them all back. As you can see. Well, I've decided to make a radical decision, and that is to replace the whole of the platforms, except platform one and 12, which I'll explain in a minute. But you'll see here, I'm pointing out the class 142, and you'll notice that I'm pointing to the bogies, or the axles, if you like. So when I pushed it up against the platform, you'll notice that the train actually hits the platform. This is the widest train that I have. So it makes sense to judge the width of the platforms by this. So by replacing the whole of the platforms right up to the main concourse, it will make sure that every single train goes in. I don't need to worry about curves on using my longest coach because it's pretty much straight. Right, welcome back. So you can see this is my first attempt at printing the platform edging. Now what I've tried to do is to replicate the horizontal uh, beams, if you like, made out of concrete and also the vertical support bars with the little fold over at the top. Now, the first, the bottom one, as you can see, does have a lot of stringing on it. That's just produced by the printer as it moves from the head to head, if you like. It's easily removed with the scalpel, as you can see from the one I'm holding in my hand. What I've done, what I've decided to do is take out all of this right the way back to there. All of that, all of that and all of that. And obviously this one. I'm not going to take out these ends too, or the, the down the back. Um, why, you think you might ask? Well, one, because it's a lot more work. I'd end up rebuilding all of this. And that's, that took quite a long time to put it in. I've got the walls there, which seem to be t tipping over a bit that way. But again, all down the side there, you've got that ramp there. And not only that, all the electrics down the side there, which do go down through the baseboards. So I think if I decide to have all this platform out, 
I'm going to create an awful lot more work and I'll end up effectively rebuilding the station from scratch. Right, you, join, you join me back up against the layout now. So what I've done is I've cut a whole load of these uh, strips 11 millimetres wide. And that is because a platform is 9 millimetres in end gauge and you've got a 2 millimetre cork layer as well. So 2 plus 9. And then what I've done is I've stuck these um, platform edges to the cardboard strips just using double sided tape and um, obviously cutting. Um, I've got um, cutting one of those little lips off there and mounting up against there. So that if I put that onto the layout and you'll notice I've removed that platform completely now. So that will sit in there like that. And I will glue that in place very, very shortly. Obviously there will be a cut at that point because um, if I do need to remove this board, this needs to come out quite quickly. These bits lift off, so it won't be a problem as and when that, if I need to do that, okay. All right, so there we are. There's the first platform structure in, and that will fit um, the Pendolino without any issues whatsoever. Um, that being my longest passenger train, of course. And uh, you can see the basic construction there. So we've got the outside um, <coughs> plastic card. That's then stuck to the, what, the two mil gray board, which is using double-sided tape. And then obviously this is all PVA down uh, but the beauty of this method is that you can actually make sure that the trains are running exactly to the distance you want. So every single one of these points can be levelled up with the train. So if I just bring this class 142 in, I can judge the distance and make sure that it's, it's pretty much the same all the way along. And because I'm not going around any, any sharp curves, I don't need to worry about using my longest coach. Right, the next bit then, just before I start putting on the tops, it would be easier to paint the sides now. So what I've done is I've taken some of this, and which is just an artist acrylic paint. Sorry, it's a bit on the big side. And I've just thinned it down a bit and I just went over the whole lot. And I've also got some slightly darker stuff coming in now which I'm going to use for that. And all I'm going to do, I'm just using an old tatty brush, but literally just daub it on. Not all over, but just sort of speckly. So I don't want the platforms to look even and fresh and new. So some of it I will do quite a lot of, put quite a bit in. Others, I'll just let it dribble down the sides. Right, so I've got some dirty water here as you can see as you can appreciate I'm always painting something so that's just the dirty water and I've put a little bit of black in it and so I'm literally just going to it's quite thin just daub it over so it like I said it acts like a null oil and then goes into the cracks and crevices that's the general idea okay and the effect we'll get, hopefully should give a very worn and distressed type look. Now you'll notice in this clip between the two 142s, I've got the platform top on now, and that's done purely by measuring the width of the platform and cutting strips to suit. Now, as I said before, I don't have to worry about curves because the platforms are pretty much straight. Now, in this clip, you'll also see me talking about or showing you papers, which I plan to stick on, but I wasn't really happy with that particular paper because it looked very pink, if you look at that, compared to the rest of the platforms. So I decided in the end to abandon that idea and paint the platforms as they were. Hmm, yes, well... I tried something because if you remember that photograph I showed you at the beginning, the thickness of the platform is actually considerably less to what I did originally. I tried to use one millimetre board instead of the two. And as you can see, it looks like the waves of the sea. So I'm just having to rip all that out and start again with the two mil. 
Well, I have to say that was a mammoth task, putting the whole new top on. I'm now going to start thinking about putting on the the grill or the the black, well, not black line, but it's grey, the um, textile paving, which is this one. I've lightened the colour for this round and this is going to be the um, edging of the platform. So I'm sorry, the light is uh, starting to flicker in and out, so I do apologise about that. So I shall, this will be the white edge and then you've got the line for the slabs because it will all be the old um, two by twos at the edge of the platform. Well, there it is. It's finally in. I'm not saying it's finished because obviously there's a lot of detail to go on it, but for now, that will be all right. So hopefully you can make out the detailing here with running that black wash down through there. You can see the planks um, of, or the concrete beams going across that way and the detailing coming down. Hopefully you can make that out and it's not too black. In fact, I'll show you the other side. Yeah, that side might be a bit easier to see, although it's not so quite so pronounced, this side. There's Pendolino out the way. Just take you down, oh, flashing again. Right, so the other thing I wasn't really ever so happy with was the um, edging strips. Now, it, that was the previous one, and I never really liked that, to be honest, because the the textured pavement the, the black bit was too dark in actual fact it's more this color and you've got two by two slabs running all the way down the edge and obviously you've got your white line and so that this part is the weathered part of that plat of that slab and then you've got your textured pavement so you've got three elements in there but when you look at it as a whole it does look as if there's a much darker strip running down both sides of the platform which is more like the real thing so yeah i'm i'm a lot happier from that point of view uh, not only that the 142 runs all the way down now whereas it didn't before and um, some trains used to get jammed on the platform so hopefully i mean i've only tested it with that um but that's my widest my widest train and because the track's dead straight it shouldn't cause any issues but uh, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, there are two more videos appearing on the screen right now. So please do take a look at those. And I'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now.